Hello everybody there. Warm greetings from Sosin Classes. This is the second in the series that we have started in the recent past, namely Anthropology and COVID post-pandemic new content. Those of you who were unable to or who could not see or uh, log into that particular video, uh, let me give you a brief uh, background of uh, what we were speaking in that particular uh, part. The whole idea of uh, doing this series is to help the students of anthropology and general readers and scholars in this particular discipline um, about how things have been changing with the discipline of uh, anthropology. Our focus was especially UPSC, Union Public Service Commission, uh, the students appearing at the exam with anthropology as the optional subject. Nevertheless, for a general social science student and general audiences as well, these videos can provide a definitely a different kind of a perspective towards how the health, global health condition can have an impact on scientific and the social scientific disciplines. In that particular uh, part, I was trying to bring to you some different examples about uh, how uh, the discipline of anthropology has gained significance in the recent past with several schools of the discipline calling for papers, new publishings happening and a huge lot of write-ups emerging from different parts of the world. Now in this particular show, episode what we will be doing is we would try to uh, observe how individual branches of anthropology have been uh, getting affected and how the new content is emerging uh, mind it that our focus is on trying to study anthropology from pure academic perspective especially with UPSC so we will be looking at different branches in the discipline and how each branch has been enriched in the recent past with with different kinds of write-ups and I am sure you would really enjoy the following talk. The discipline of anthropology as is known to all of you has been a discipline that studies the humans from different perspectives, different timelines. Nevertheless here in this context we have to see, we have to understand that the discipline has provided a human-centered approach in understanding the epidemic. In this context, I would want to quote a very renowned contemporary linguistic anthropologist, namely Hugh Gustafson. Uh, in his article named What's Wrong with the Chinese Virus, he uh, had brought in very interesting insights about anthropology and its human-centered approach. In fact, this particular topic, that is, human-centered approach itself can be a question in UPSC. Now, uh, let me read out what he has to say and uh, maybe that would open doors for our understanding from anthropology's perspective. He says uh, that uh, the discipline uh, has a human-centered approach to dealing with epidemics. And then he says, where systems saw deficits, anthropologists saw leadership, innovation, capacity and courage that needed to be nurtured. And he says, because he's a linguistic anthropologist, where communications experts saw rumors and misinformation, anthropologists saw legitimately confusing informational environment with insufficient human engagement that was driving people to make the best decisions they could with the information they had. And for him, the medical responders saw hiding or concealing of the cases, anthropologists saw dysfunctional reporting systems and people dying without their families being notified of their deaths. And the individuals who were being turned away from the medical facilities, who were fleeing to get to a household where they could access childcare, food, and if they were sick or valid and legitimate reasons to fear the legal authorities. 
that actually opens and sums up the entire issue of how different communities across the world have been fearfully living in this particular time of pandemic. All is not lost now, you see, I mean, in this particular discipline, we see that uh, these ways of thinking are going to provide new understandings to us. Now, it is here that I would want to start off with one very important uh, uh, set of uh, write-ups being released by the international organization UNESCO. So, the first uh, component that I am picking up here is uh, sociocultural anthropology in which we are going to see the UNESCO's uh, weekly uh, response sheet as is named as culture and COVID-19 impact and response. See this particular uh, information is not simply about the numbers. See they are not simply looking at the statistics. They are looking at the faces behind the numbers. They are not really uh, talking simply about the number of people that are uh, maybe you know tested positive or the people who must have died. That is not the whole thing. The, that is only a superficial way of providing information. What UNESCO is trying to do is how different cultures across the world or different governments across the world have been handling this particular situation. It is in this sense, as the name says, impact and response, how the same health situation, global pandemic situation has been, has, has seen different kinds of responses from different parts of the world. Now, this actually shows the examples from different parts of the world, as the picture shows. Um, some uh, references I have taken from there. One the region of Morocco and how they have handled the situation and um, Western Africa how artists and advocates were actually being provided opportunities and raising awareness of uh, the pandemic and something related to the Southern, Am Southern uh, America in Argentina the Culture Commission has uh, used the services of 500 odd artists in producing digital and similarly you know there are various other countries you may perhaps give a pause and have a great uh, close look at uh, the various kinds of approaches UNESCO was mentioning from different parts of the world. So you have Italy, you have Iran, so you may perhaps based on the requirement of your exam, you may get into that particular document of UNESCO and try checking it. So this is a very beautiful comparative study as anthropology has always remained a comparative discipline. Though the situation is one and the same, though the uh, Though the health environment is one and the same across the world, the responses have been different. I mean, when I am speaking of this, the whole lot of anthropological theory comes into this. Meaning, uh, you must have read at different places in the discipline that even if the sociocultural environment largely remains the same, the physical environment remains the same, how is it that the responses were varying? So, it is a great opportunity for us to see that when we are encountering the same problem, different human societies encountering the same problem, but their approach, their response to that same problem seems to be different. They may be using different cultural tools in spreading awareness, in handling the epidemic and then perhaps in trying to see how the economy has to respond, how the economy has to be modified, how the political systems and governing bodies have to come up with their own innovative ways of dealing with the same pandemic. I mean, this is a very beautiful opportunity to see the comparative study of different cultures and nationalities. As you can see here, the Canadian Anthropological Society has called for papers for its special edition. As you can see here, they are uh, considering the medical anthropological work 
to be you know encouraged and apart from that you can see here the special issue as it is named comparative suffering in political sphere usages of uh, contemporary holocaust comparisons i mean especially when we are looking at the first part here comparative suffering in the political sphere this is uh, that uh, set of articles that are to be released in the later part of this year so please do not miss this particular uh, you know, journal keep a watch on this so that you know, the people who are going to write in the upcoming uh, one or two years these articles can be of a great help to you uh, because there, there are going to be tons of them now coming to the different branches of anthropology in the talks in the talk today's talk and the several talks that are going to follow we will actually be uh, incorporating articles in those four major spheres that is biological anthropology linguistic tribal and development anthropology and sociocultural anthropology in uh, today's talk we already have seen a couple of uh, important references from that point of view let me first show you some from the sphere of economic and political anthropology Look at this. I mean, the name itself seems to be very scintillating. Anti-capitalist politics in the time of COVID-19. This is actually the article, as you may have a look at this, very, very close. 17th of May, 2020. And the article written by David Harvey anti-capitalist politics in the time of COVID-19. David Harvey is a Marxist uh, geographer uh, who believes that this 40 years of neoliberalism has left the public totally exposed and very ill-prepared for a global pandemic like that of uh, the COVID. It is here that uh, the scholars and students in anthropology ask questions, vital questions such as what anthropology can offer at a time uh, of uh, such a precarious thing in the world. According to David Harvey, anthropology provides a discussion forum. Uh, he presents fascinating and interdisciplinary examples to show how anthropology can be a vital instrument to help uh, s handle such kind of situations. I am here trying to present some examples that he had given to us. He refers to this one author, namely Judith Bayer, who has written the article on being voices of prudence in times of pandemic. In her write-up, she discusses the role and methods of public anthropology, how public anthropology works in this time of rapid and often overwhelming and conflicting scientific responses. She brings to light how different scientific forums across the world and governments across the world are coming up with very diverse scientific responses for the same uh, situation. Now, let me bring to you some of the very other interesting such uh, articles and uh, publications across the journals. For the students of UPSC Anthropology, you are not supposed to neglect them and I request you to make a note of these so that you can refer to them from time to time. Now this is one article as you can see here. We have this article, Anthropologists helped during Ebola, could they help now? I mean this is a very interesting one. It is not simply the science journal in the annual reviews but across the world there are uh, innumerable discussions that are going on on what was the preparedness with which several countries especially the African countries had come up with the preparedness for Ebola and whether that particular kind of a preparedness would be of help to uh, the communities right now. Now on that note, I mean this is a very interesting uh, board that we can find where uh, WHO was working in Africa. Now look at this. This is that article written by Melisha Leach. Melisha Leach writes, uh, Echoes of uh, Ebola, Social and Political Warnings for COVID-19 and Responses from African Settings. Melisha Leach uh, in her article uh, tries to sum up the events, the kind of preparations from 2005 onwards. 
there were set of WHO guidelines related to international health and those guidelines based on which Sierra Leone had come up with uh, some interesting uh, uh, socio-cultural mechanisms and health mechanisms to handle Ebola. As you can see in the write-up here that had come up in 2015 that talks about uh, epidemiologists as cultural heroes and that talks about the next pandemic so it actually talks about how uh, the upcoming uh, communities and societies have to be prepared for anything vital of the level of Ebola so writings were there uh, caution was there culturologists were writing and uh, we will have to understand here when academicians researchers from across the world are were, spo were speaking about something to come up and what we will have to be doing in order to prepare ourselves it becomes the responsibility of the community it becomes the responsibility of the governments and people in important positions in the governments and across the world to give a seat look at such kind of writings mind it sir the discipline such as anthropology has one of its responsibilities socio-cultural and biological responsibility the responsibility is to predict anything of this you know, range so when people were talking about such kind of things well in advance maybe we uh, have to prepare as I said to you and I repeat the governments and people in important positions across the world they have to give a serious look and have to prepare the communities to any such thing that is going to occur look at this this is something from the uh, from Sierra Leone this is the president of Sierra Leone who is uh, trying to check on the readiness assessment and uh, this is one country that had used uh, its intelligentsia and academicians to fight Ebola and that is where we can see, I mean, those of you who are writing this particular exam of UPSC, you can go to the uh, website of WHO towards the footer, you find this various health related topics out there. One of them that is recently incorporated is this, but if you go into the rest of them, all of them would really help you in preparing well for your exam. Now, on the screen you can see this particular author Delger, a socio-cultural anthropologist. You can refer to his articles as well. He was writing about how the socio-cultural institution, say for example the Japanese family institution, how was it better prepared or prepared in the other sense for something of this kind. So it is not simply the Japanese family for that matter, the familial and uh, ritual institutions across various cultures. This is the subject matter of this gentleman, Dilger. Kindly look into his writings. On the screen you find this lady who is an anthropologist named has to she is the health minister in the government of Canada now, this actually is very very interesting in the contemporary world when things of this kind and many more surprising events to come up in the future we need to have anthropologists in responsible positions in the positions uh, of decision making so that an altogether different perspective can be given to the problem and to the solution because uh, anthropologists look at altogether a different perspective than the general population so and uh, she had been associated with the public health and her experience you can actually read about what she actually had written I have mentioned here that is April 3rd 2020 very recent past so you can actually see her insights apart from this from the development and tribal anthropology this particular article can be of a great help indigenous communities are at high risk uh, of getting the COVID and this article talks about the vulnerabilities of the indigenous populations when they are suddenly exposed to the rest of the world and they are at the highest risk uh, this article can be of great help to you as a case study 
Apart from this, in your syllabus, you have a topic of non-governmental organizations and how they have been instrumental in tribal and developmental anthropology. And this particular article talks about the uh, health and security risks which uh, the vulnerable communities across the globe, I mean especially this article talks about Iraqi vulnerable communities. But uh, as a part of that article, they have also incorporated various religious communities and the differential response and treatment uh, of uh, various religious communities in this particular situation, meaning that we have another angle to come up here that is religions and anthropology in the particular uh, context of COVID. You can see on the screen WHO's 7th of April 2020 release where there were guidelines issued to faith communities, faith based communities and religious leaders and what to do, what not to do kind of. And it is from here the religious groups responses are actually analyzed. So that uh, is something very interesting. Religion, uh, how the uh, rules within religion have to be amended, have to be slightly modified to meet the requirement of health. And apart from this, this is something that all the students have to be very carefully doing. I am adding a PDF attached to this video so you can actually go down to the comment segment and you can actually extract this uh, PDF. Uh, this is a beautiful compilation. I'm showing one page here. The current anthropology articles on COVID-19. There are about 30 odd articles that are compiled, compiled here. You can actually go to that particular list and I'm sure uh, this list will give you enormous uh, information for the exam and many more to come actually. For now I'm leaving you here. In the future we will be coming up with several other interesting particular studies that I would pick up based on the nationality, based on the culture groups, based on particular branch of anthropology. We will be continuing with this kind of uh, lectures in the future as well talks in the future as well. So keep visiting us on our website sourcingclasses.com and then um, subscribe to the, to the channel Source in Classes. Keep visiting us and keep writing and make the maximum benefit of the effort that we are making for the benefit of the students. Have a great time. Thank you. Signing off Source in here.